Hello, and welcome to 805 Focus, where you get the latest updates on your local nonprofit community. My name is Greg Gorga, Executive Director of your Santa Barbara Maritime Museum, and your host for today, filling in for the amazing Cinder Sinclair. And with me today is Lori Goodman. She's the Executive Director of LEAP, formerly known as the uh, Isla Vista Youth Project. She's a colleague of mine, good friend. I've known her for many years. I highly respect her. And I'm so happy to have you here today, Lori. Thank you so much, Greg. It's so nice to be here. And nice to be here with you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, I, I know you have a big change to announce, but let's talk about the history of the Isla Vista Youth Projects. Sure. So we are a more than 50-year-old agency. And we came into being um, during the unrest in Isla Vista in the early 70s. The Bank of America burned to the ground, and the activists in the community at that time recognized that there were no services for families and children in Isla Vista. And that's where we were born. Um, the Youth Projects was established in 1971 with a teen mm -hmm. program, and then in 1974 we opened the Isla Vista Children's Center and began providing childcare, which we all know is so important. Mm -hmm. um, during that time, there were two other organizations established, the Isla Vista Parks and Rec District and the Isla Vista Food Co-op, and all three organizations are still going strong, supporting the community of Isla Vista. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to talk about the families you serve in a minute, but let's talk about LEAP and, and why the change. Sure. So, of course, we continue to serve the families of Isla Vista, but we are doing so much more. Uh, the work we do, we like to say we mitigate the effects of poverty, racism, and trauma by mm. providing childcare, family support, and community leadership. And we do that not only in Isla Vista, but in Goleta. We have clients from Santa Barbara. We have clients who come down from Lompoc and Santa Maria to make use of our diaper bank. So we've begun, we've changed our name to LEAP, Learn, Engage, Advocate, Partner, mm -hmm. because that really encompasses all the work we do and it gives us the opportunity to leap into new new ventures. We've always been an organization that's been responsive to community needs mm -hmm. and becoming leap allows us to leap to wherever we are most needed and to provide the service that's most needed. Wonderful. So you've outgrown you've gone beyond the Isla Vista community. We and the organization has been serving families far beyond Isla Vista for many years. <laughs> and we need to tell the world mm -hmm. that. And let's talk about Isla Vista itself, because a lot of people think Isla Vista, all UCSB students, uh, and, and forget about, I don't think they realize how many families there are in, in that community. Well, it's interesting you ask that, Greg. Certainly the demo demographics of Isla Vista have changed over the years. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we leapt away from calling ourselves Isla Vista is that truly there are fewer and fewer families living mm -hmm. in Isla Vista. I'm really interested in talking about what, um, what LEAP means to mm -hmm. me. Um, because it takes so much strength to be able to leap. If you mm -hmm. think of a dancer, you need, um, you, need, you need strength and training, but you also need a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. You need something to push up, off of. Uh -huh. So when I think about our organization, it's those roots in Isla Vista that is the strong foundation. Mm -hmm. It's a great birth story for us to feel proud of and for us, for our families, for our children, to be able to leap from that strong foundation into their future. I love that. You know, you referred to dancers. A lot of times dancers are helping each other leap, so you have that collaboration element in that as well. That's exactly right. I, um, I like to think about so much of what we do is helping build community mm -hmm. because it is through those relationships 
that children grow strong, that families grow strong and resilient. And so we're really actively working to not only provide service and support, but to weave connections. And I think what makes us special is those very deep connections mm -hmm. um, of doing whatever it takes to support families. So what are the challenges for families that you're serving? Well, you know, we say we mitigate the effects of poverty, racism, and trauma, and the mm -hmm. challenges are poverty, racism, and trauma. Mm -hmm. It's that trifecta that makes, you know, creates additional challenges. Mm -hmm. So, um, and our systems are really set up to perpetuate those. Yeah. I think about that in the nonprofit space that funders often like to give just enough so that you're not struggling, but not enough to really do your big vision. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because during the pandemic, funding changed a little bit and mm -hmm. it was more generous. And as a result, we've been able to leap into uh, really addressing needs that that we couldn't have done otherwise if we were on a tight shoestring. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, we opened the first and only diaper bank in Santa Barbara County. That's why we have families coming from Santa Maria, Lompoc, Carpinteria, because they need diapers sure. and they're coming, they're coming to us. Mm -hmm. We had an opportunity where um, we saw when children went back to school in person, they needed desks in crowded housing conditions. Sometimes children didn't don't have an didn't have a space at home. At home, and so we bought lap desks, and we would get referrals from the school district. And when a family needed a desk, they got that plus more because. Our family resource center would reach out to them and say, what else do you need? Do you need food? Can we help mm -hmm. you with immigration resources? Can we help you with parenting classes? Mm -hmm. We did a lot of COVID outreach. And being able to leap into those opportunities mm -hmm. is, um, is such a blessing. And transformational for those families, I'm sure. I think so. Yeah. I and child so. care is such a big issue and it's so expensive. So that, you still have that service. Oh yes, that's our, uh, that's our flagship. Mm -hmm. It is um, our driver and it's really at the heart of what we do. Um, children having a good, strong start in a loving, nurturing environment mm -hmm. is important for their growth, but also for their parent, their caregiver to be able to work and to be able to contribute and not have the stress of worrying whether their child is going to be cared for or not, mm -hmm. to know that it's high quality and developmentally appropriate, and then to be surrounded by a community of love. Yeah. And we see that so many of our employees actually got their start as families in our children's center or families um, who are using the resources in our Family Resource Center. Oh, wow. I, I, I like to say that our employees are our community. Mm -hmm. They're not serving the community. They are part of the community. That's why they're so good at, and passionate about their work. Sure, and they probably know the needs of the families because they had they some do. of those needs They have before. those same needs, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, wonderful. So other services that you're providing in addition to childcare that um, help these families? Sure, so we, in addition to our childcare center, which is year round, nine to five, um, sorry, longer than that, eight a.m. to 5 p.m. Wow. year round, uh, we have a family resource center and mm -hmm. our family resource center addresses um, both emergent needs that families have as well as aspirational mm -hmm. needs. So we do a monthly food distribution. We have an emergency food pantry. We have our diaper bank. We um, support families in accessing resources like CalFresh or Medi-Cal, unemployment, mm -hmm. um, whatever forms are they're very complicated. We support families with that. We have been addressing immigration needs. We partner with Immigrant Hope, 
Mm -hmm. Learn, engage, advocate, partner. Mm -hmm. Partnership is so much about how we support families. Sure. So we partner with Immigrant Hope. We've been doing monthly webinars, responding to the community's questions about immigration, citizenship. Um, we have been doing health outreach and health navigation and really helping um, families find the health care, but also learn correct information about mm -hmm. how to stay healthy. Hmm. We partner with the Goleta Union School District and um, do outreach and support to families, but also mindfulness conversations with the K through six students mm -hmm. so that they are grounded, healthy, and whole. Again, it's a community approach. Mm -hmm. um, it's relationship-based. Mm -hmm. So while we talk about our services, what we're really talking about is building a resilient and connected community. Oh, wonderful. And those early years are so important to the development of a child, right? Right. We've got to start early and mm -hmm. then keep our arms wrapped around the families all the way through. And I'm, I'm sure that a lot of those parents are so busy working sometimes multiple jobs that, you know, in addition to raising children, which is a full-time job in itself, yes. it, it's so important to provide those services. I think that there are tremendous stressors on families and we've all experienced it, caring, mm -hmm. for, caring for children plus caring for parents, working, um, and those are exacerbated when you're experiencing poverty, when there's childhood trauma in the family, when there's just other, um, when you're experiencing racism. Mm -hmm. Those are additional barriers and we do our best to, um, if not completely change the system, at least acknowledge them mm -hmm. and do our best to make it a little bit better. And you talk about, I know your website talks about culturally sensitive family support, so that ties into the... That's our Family Resource Center. Yeah, okay. Um, and again, our staff are, are our community. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't always look like the community we serve, but my staff does. And how many staff do you have? Oh, it's growing. We've been hiring teachers like mm -hmm. crazy. Uh, I think we're about 54, 55 staff members. Wow. And do you use volunteers? We do. We mm -hmm. always need volunteers for our food distribution. That's once a month, usually the first or second Thursday of the month. It would be good to check the website. Mm -hmm. And we need folks to come and help pack up the food and distribute it. For those who like to have a little deeper um, dive into into supporting us, you can volunteer in our children's center. Mm -hmm. That's a little more effort. You need to be fingerprinted. Mm -hmm. It's a commitment. Mm -hmm. Sure. But we always need people to come hold babies, or maybe you have a specialty of like playing music and you want to come and sing with children once or twice a week, or maybe you want to read stories with children. We uh -huh. welcome that kind of volunteer work. And that sounds like fun reading it's stories so to children. It's so much fun. Let me tell you, those kids are adorable. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. And so um, besides volunteering, I'm sure there's other ways the community can support your wonderful work. So Yes, we, um, we always need donations. Mm -hmm. And it's those donations that enable us to take the leap to do what's right for the community. Mm -hmm. So our website is leapcentralcoast.org. That's L-E-A-P centralcoast.org. Um, you can still get there the old way, IVYP.org. Either way, you'll get, you'll get to us. But um, we, you can just click on that donate button. Because mm -hmm. that, that helps make the work possible, right? It does. Absolutely. It does. So, besides, so I'm, it sounds like your, some of your staff are your success stories. Any other success stories you want to share? Yes, actually, I'd love to just... I, we, I wanted to share about one of our staff members who was a former parent that I heard about this morning. So one of the things we have committed to is really developing our staff. You may have heard that there's a child care worker shortage. Mm -hmm. That is at least as challenging as the child care availability shortage. And so the way we're trying to address that is by supporting our staff to go advance their educations. Oh, nice. So one of our 
teaching assistants who started out as a recipient of services and then volunteered as a health outreach worker mm -hmm. and then was hired as a, um, a, as a teaching assistant and her children went to our children's center, one of them is still there, has started going to school. She is going to graduate in May of 2023. By the time you see this, she's probably <laughs> already graduated. And her daughters are now looking at her and beginning to talk about going to college, mm -hmm. about advancing their own education, because they're seeing their mom going back to school or going mm -hmm. to school. Mm -hmm. And even though she's taking care of three children and struggling financially, sure. she is investing in herself and she works at a place that invests in her. And it's already filtering down to the next generation. And that's when we ultimately are talking about is multi-generational change making. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we do that, um, at every single level. Wow, she sounds like an amazing person. She's so great and articulate, but she's not the only one. Yeah. That's, um, mm -hmm. we, heard, we got to hear about her just today, but I'm really pleased that she's not the only one with that yeah. experience. And great for her children, because you know, I grew up fairly middle class and I didn't realize all the opportunities out there for me. Uh, you know, so for them, her children to see that happening, and it's, it's life-changing, right? I sure hope so. Yeah. So you're also involved, you know, you talk about partnerships with LEAP, but you're also very involved in the nonprofit community. Can you tell us a little bit about some other organizations you're working with? Sure. Well, as an organization, LEAP Partners, we've been having actually a really lovely partnership with Santa Barbara Dance Institute recently. Um, Rosalina Masio from Santa Barbara Dance Institute reached out to me to see if we might want to do multi-generational dance. So we've begun having monthly family fiestas where we um, invite the families to come on a Friday evening. We feed them. The, the chef from our children's center cooks. He is really good. We do, we do dance, parents and children and staff dancing together. And we are learning about different cultures through the dance and the food. Oh, nice. And this helps, helps our families build relationships separate from getting services mm -hmm. or from sending their kids to school. We had over 100 people wow. the last one. It was fabulous. We partner, um, I build partnerships through the Goleta Valley Community Partnership Network. Mm -hmm. And that's just, again, the idea that when we have relationships, we can really take care of our community better when we trust each other. And then I'm very active in the Leading From Within mm -hmm. network, which is of course how I know you mm -hmm. and Cinder, and a similar vision of when we have trust, when leaders know each other and have trust, we can take risks, we can take leaps into new ventures, try new things, and maybe create the kind of um, community and world we want to live in. And I think you're doing that. I try. Absolutely. I, I try. think you are. Well, thank you. I think our time is almost up. Anything else you want to add? To well, I want to thank you so much for having me. And I want to remind people that if you would like to volunteer or even better, if you'd like to donate to visit our website at leapcentralcoast.org. Well, thank you, Lori. Appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. And thank you, everybody, for joining 805 Focus. We'll see you next time.